Hello, welcome to Ginger Ginge. Now today I've got a really exciting video. So, I don't think I've actually shown it yet on my Instagram, so you'll probably see this about the same time that the video gets posted on my Instagram. But I've bought myself a yellow moray eel. It's a yellow head moray eel, golden head moray eel, something along those lines. Um, and I've had him in this tank for about a week, maybe two weeks now, and he's doing really, really well and he's actually hand feeding as well. Apparently in the shop he wasn't hand feeding, um, but here he's he's taking food ready at hand. Now I know there's gonna be a lot of people saying, oh, you shouldn't hand feed him, it's dangerous. If he bites you, he can... In the day, it's my choice. If I wanna feed him by hand, I'll feed him by hand. Same with any of my fish. Um, I've got a lime fish. I don't feed him by hand just because he is so small, but once he gets a bit bigger, then I probably will start feeding him by hand just because I want to basically. All my fish hand feed, I have a feed off my hand, they feed by tweezers, so it's, it's really nice getting that sort of, that interaction with them basically. And yeah, so I want to show you my feeding of my new moray eel, I want to show you the feeding of my lionfish, and just a couple of other updates with the tank I've got upstairs. I've got a new tank that's out in the utility room. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you a big update on everything what's happening basically. And I have just heard that there's some I can't remember what they were called now. I think he said they were dragon eels. I don't think they're the Japanese dragon eels, um, but they're, they're a type of dragon eel as well. So I may be getting my hand on one of those and also a zebra eel. So over there, uh, you could, I'll quickly show you just because it's messy, but I'll flip the camera around. Over there in that space where all this rubbish is, this is where I'm gonna be building my uh, big saltwater pond. So it's literally gonna be all the way to the door. The door sort of comes to about there. It's gonna come straight out and then it's gonna go into here. And that is gonna be my saltwater pond. It's gonna be quite quite deep. Um, looking at sort of dimension, it's probably gonna be around four, Oh, I don't know, I can't remember. I mentioned it the other day, but it's gonna be absolutely ginormous. So that whole area there, coming right up to, you see like that corner there. So that is the concrete base that I'd put in just to level this floor, because it was a bit wibbly wobbly. And that was so that when I put my custom racks in that I've built, as you can see, they're absolutely fantastic. They work really well. This is where all my snakes are now gonna be kept. So I'm, I've done this one rack. I will be doing a, a full video on this at some point. So this is one rack that I've built. Um, this is the old rack that I used to use. You can see there's all snakes in there, but eventually this will be a row of four of these custom racks that I've built. And that's where all my adult females are gonna go. They're all in FB70 tubs. They've all got these bowl holders. You can see I've got a little cheeky pairing gun on there. He's currently being smushed. He's obviously into that kind of thing, but yeah, so. All of these tubs are absolutely fantastic, really happy with these. And the rack itself is performing absolutely brilliantly. I, I can't fault it in any way. So yeah, there'll be a bank of four of these. So uh, they're 10 high. So I'm gonna have 40 breeder females along this wall. That's why I had to do this concrete base, just level it out, just so that basically all this lines up perfectly. Otherwise my OCD will just go mad. But yeah, so once, that's all in place. The pond, I'm actually gonna start building very soon just cause I need more room. But yeah, the pond's gonna literally come from a line all the way down here, across there, and that whole thing is gonna be a huge pond. Uh, filtration for it. I was done with an how to do it. I didn't know if I was gonna knock through that wall and put a big filtration thing on the other side of that wall. Um, I've got quite a lot of stuff out there. I'm not sure what I'm doing with it just yet, but that is a, a possibility. But for now, um, I'm gonna have a above pond sump. So on the back of this wall here, I've got a huge uh, tank that I've got my eye on, and that is gonna be my, my sump basically. It's just gonna be above the pond. I'll sort of raise it up on either side and it will sit on top of that. So that's where that filtration will go at the minute. If I do somehow get room out there, then it will be moved out there basically. So yeah, that's uh, that's, the update on the pond, as you can see, it is very messy, but I'm hopefully gonna start working on this very soon. So uh, if, you, if you're into your big saltwater ponds and things like that, it's gonna be well worth a watch. I'm not gonna do a full uh, DIY how-to video. Uh, I'm just gonna be showing like the basics of, of what I'm doing basically. But then this bit of wall here on the back, this is all just gonna be wasted. What you can see, I've started painting and where I've moved this rack over, that's where I painted up to. And, yeah, I'm not gonna bother painting that bit because that's all gonna be hidden. I'm just lazy like that. But yeah, this back wall is gonna be wasted. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with this back wall. I was thinking about putting like a, a big fresh water tank up here and getting maybe a, a silver arowana and some stingrays and things like that. But it just depends how big 
the tank's going to be depending on this filtration. If this filtration all goes out there, then can I, I could have a huge tank that goes all the way along this wall. So I'd have a nice big freshwater predator tank up here, then I'd have the huge saltwater predator pond down here. How how awesome would that be? That'd be so cool. And with this as well, I probably wouldn't have any filtration for this big tank that'd go on top. Um, I've got like a you can see I'm decorating still, but I've got like this hose line that runs all the way across. So I would probably have some form of uh, trickle um, feed going into the top of it. So it'd be constant fresh water going in to the, the tank. Only a small trickle. Um, and I might do some sort of filtration thing up there. So it would trickle through maybe some activated carbon and some media and stuff like that. Just to try and treat the water a little bit. So when it goes into the tank, it's good for the fish. But yeah, that's how all that is going. Now, I don't know if you've watched a lot of my channels, but in this corner i used to have a, a big weightlifting rack up here and i actually had a fish tank balanced up there and i had all sorts in there i had uh, red tail catfish i had paku in there and then i switched it all out for um mirror carp and they're now in the pond they're doing well they're absolutely huge which is brilliant so that tank i had up there i've actually repurposed and it's been moved down to here so this is a i believe it's like a 250 litre tank it's not a huge tank but it's it's doing the job for now you can see since putting this huge eel in i've been getting some back to, uh cyanobacteria um so oh, i can't talk some cyanoalgae in there and there's a little bit of algae around everywhere i don't really mind the algae because it is beneficial to the tank it doesn't look good but it, it doesn't harm it it just sort of helps basically but in here i've got a, a pink tail trigger um he had a close call with the eel the other day, you can see him there. He had a very close call, he actually grabbed hold of him for a few seconds. It was my own fault. I got I got this guy really excited about some food and I think he just, it was like a, just a, an instinctive thing to grab the first thing that went in front of him. So yeah, oh, he's having a little, a little scratch by the looks of it. So yeah, this is my yellow head, uh, golden head more eel, whatever you want to call it. And he is amazing, he is huge, he's probably about just over two foot in length and he's doing really really well you can see he's he's pretty good with fish i've got this little blue damsel in here and he's not even touched that so that's really good and then if i take you over to the back corner here you can see my little lionfish so this is a fuzzy dwarf lionfish that i picked up um, i do actually plan on getting a proper a, he knows he's going to get fed i do actually plan on getting a um and just a normal standard line fish that you see as well so i do want to get one of those and then over here you'll notice i've got this little net that i've had to make now i've got two of these little clowns in here now these are given to my friend um he had four clownfish in the tank and these guys were just bullying the hell out of everything so he asked i wanted to take him i had a spare tank so i grabbed them i had these i've had these a couple of months now um and i had to put them in this net just because I was worried that this guy would have a little snack on him and because my friend was uh, very <laughs> he basically treated these things like his babies and I just didn't want anything bad to happen to him so for now they're in here um, and I will be moving them to a, another tank I can't put them in the tank upstairs because they'll probably bully my other clownfish up there but yeah they're they're just in here temporarily but they're happy enough I'm gonna buy a little um, anemone that I can put in here for them so they'll have something to cuddle into and then here, I think I did a little video on this on my Instagram. This is just my little DIY skimmer that I made for this. And as you can see, it is skimming incredibly well. Look at all that muck that's pulling out. And it's just two little wooden air stones up in there. Wooden air stones work a lot better in salt water than just the normal air stones. Um, and yeah, you can see the amount of muck that's pulling out and that's probably about a week's worth. So I will need to clean that out at some point. But yeah, this is the little setup for the tank. I've got a little LED light on there, nothing special. You can see all the food there. I've got defrosting, I'll go through that in a second. But yeah, what we'll do is we're gonna get this food ready and we're gonna do a little feed in and you'll see everything eats by hand. Um, this guy comes up and eats out of my hand. The, the clownfish are very tame. Uh, the blue dam's always a little bit finicky, doesn't really come out too much. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see him in the... Oh God, I've just scared everything in the tank. I don't know if you can see him at the back. Oh, he's just kicked up with my... But in the back there, you can probably just see his head poking through. It's not going to focus because of the debris. But I do have a snowflake eel in here as well. And he does feed off the, the tweezers as well. But he's hiding in the back there. So you won't you won't get to see him too much. And look at that. He's, he's had a little... 
a little tantrum and he's kicked all this up. He is probably a little bit too big to be in his tank, but like I said, the pond's not gonna be too far down the road, so at some point he will be upgrading to that and it will be a huge upgrade for him. So all I'm gonna do is with this food, I'm literally just gonna clean this out a couple of times, try and get all that, that liquid and fluid that's all frozen into him out so that it doesn't foul the water too badly and uh, yeah, we'll get into some feeding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, you can see I've got all the food in here. So I've got a mix match now, I've got some mussels and shells, uh, I've got some little white baits in there, and I've got a load of sort of krill and, and brine shrimp in there. And I'll just chuck them in one pot just because it's, it's a lot easier. So what I'll do is I actually start off by feeding the clownfish. So I'll just get a little pinch. You know, I'll go be able to see if I focus. I'll just get a little pinch like that and I end up dropping it in there. And they have a nice little little chow down there. And what it's going to do is it's going to slowly get that sent into the water just so that he knows that it's going to be feeding time. And the same thing again, I'll grab a few more and I'll actually drop them in the main part of the tank. And again, that's mainly for the other fish. So everything that's in there will come up and eat. The old trigger fish, he'll come up and have a little munch. You can see the little blue damsel. So everything will have a little, a little feed. And again, it just gets that scent of water because the eels, they don't have a uh, great eyesight. So a lot of their, their feeding hunting is done by, by uh, scent. Um, obviously they can still see, but they can't see a great amount. So dump a little bit more in there. You can see it all floats around. There's, I've only got this little wave maker and this little outlet, and there seems to be quite a lot of decent flow that moves around here. So considering the size of the tank, it actually does quite well. And this trigger fish, he is actually quite big. He's probably about as long as my hand, so he, he's a decent size. It just shows how much room they do actually have in there. So you can see now that scent's getting into the water. You can see he's starting to poke his head out and he's starting to, to see what's going on. So it's just a case of, he does get, I think it's because I enlarged the tank earlier, he's sort of sulking a little bit. Um, so that's why he kicked up everything up. So. I will get him out at some point and uh, show you how he feeds, but for now I'm just going to sort of feed the trigger fish, feed the damsel, and then once he comes out and gets a little bit more interested, we'll, uh, we'll show that. So the first thing I'm going to try and feed is my little lionfish. So this is where he normally hangs out. He normally hangs out on the top of his pump. Um, he likes to hang out around the neck of this uh, prone skimmer that I've built as well. So this is where he sort of hangs out, sorted. I'm going to try and break off a little bit of uh, prawn or shrimp, whatever I've got. And um, yeah, see if he'll, he'll take a piece off the tongs. Now he's only small, so he's not going to take a, a big piece. But we'll just see if he'll, he'll take it off the tongs. Boom, and there you go. Brilliant. So he, he originally started feeding on a live ghost shrimp. Um, and it just wasn't viable for me to keep buying it. I couldn't keep the ghost shrimp alive. So I managed to finally get him onto frozen krill, uh, which is what I've got in there now. And then after that, I actually managed to get him feeding on the, the, the large shrimp. So it's an absolute bonus. It's good for him because I can give him nice big chunks, sort of fills him up a bit quicker. And he, believe it or not, he has actually grown quite a lot. He looks quite small here, but he, he's actually grown considerably. And you can see he's, he's really, really good with the feed. And he feeds off the tongs. Obviously, I'm not gonna feed him by hand just yet because he is too small. You see he's got him spines on the top. But at a minute, feeding off tongs, I'm more than happy with that. So I'll get up a piece and see if he takes. He normally eats about two or three pieces and then he's full. And he does sort of follow me around the tank as well. He sort of gets a little bit impatient if I don't feed him. So I've got a little bit of a bigger piece. So, oh, oh, bang, look at that. Straight on it, it's a little bit of a bigger piece. So you can see it's sticking out of his mouth a little bit. But that's, God, their mouths are absolutely huge. And I think they can sort of eat anything that's up to about a third of their body. So, yeah, they can, they can actually do quite a lot of damage. <laughs> they can eat a lot of small fish, and once he gets probably double this size, he'd, he'd probably have a guy like that little blue damsel and everything. But I love his eyes. He's got these little, see if I can zoom in on them, he's got these little green iridescent eyes, which are really, really cool. But the colours on him are amazing. The colour on his cheeks are like bright red. It just doesn't come out on camera. I do need to get a proper lens for actually filming on the tanks. Maybe it's full, I don't know. It might be because the other fish get a little bit close as well, because obviously everything eats off the uh, the tongs. He does get a little bit agitated when the bigger fish come near him. But to be honest, he should eat this piece. Like I said, he has two or three pieces. 
Or maybe he's just full. Maybe he's eating something else that's been in the tank. Yeah, he's sort of, you can see he's sort of shying away from it now. So I think that's it for him. But old Trigger, he'll come and have a piece. He'll take it straight off. He's an absolute beast. I love the colours on him. The purples, the blues. He's just so cool. He's really aggressive as well, which is what I like. But yeah, it'd be nice when he gets double this size. Then he actually starts eating huge pieces of prawn as well. It's going to be really cool. So I think he's been a little bit grumpy just because I sort of unlocked the tank earlier. I don't think he's going to want to come up too much. But what we'll do is we'll just see if we can get him to feed where he is. So obviously I've got the lion fish in here. I do need to be careful. I don't want to be putting my hands in, but I can see him. He's on the opposite side of the tank, so I know he's there. The trigger fish, he might come up and have a go at me because he's a little bit of a cheeky chap. He likes to have a little nibble every now and again. Um, but to be honest, he's, he's pretty harmless. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the tongs. Normally he will come all the way to the surface. He'll normally stick his head out of the water and I literally normally use my fingers and I will feed him that way. He, he's super, super gentle. Um, hopefully he'll show that today, but he normally is super gentle. The way he takes food is just perfect. You, could, you couldn't, it's better than most people's dogs. So what we'll do is I'm just going to lower this down and uh, see if we can get him to take the tank off the tongs. Like I said, he is a little bit upset because I'm knocked to the tank. You saw him have his little little brat attack earlier. So I'll just hold this in front of him, let him realize that I am just feeding him, nothing else is gonna go on. And uh, we'll see if he wants to take a little fish. I do like to vary his diet, so I'll give him a little piece of fish. Um, then I've got some, some large shrimps and there he goes. So you can see how gentle he is. If I, cause I'm holding on to that, he couldn't take it, but you can see how gentle he is. He's literally just mouthing it. And as soon as I let go, that's when he swallows it. And it's quite cool to watch him eat as well. So if you give the fish to him uh, tail first, he'll actually sort of spin the fish around in his mouth and eat head first. And you've got to think when they're in the wild, in the sea, a lot of the fish that this guy is going to be eating, they do actually have spines that stop them from getting eaten. So it's sort of like with snakes and any sort of reptile and animal like that, they and birds, and when they get their prey, they'll actually eat head first because it's a lot easier for them to, to swallow it down. So I've got one more piece here. I don't like to overfeed this guy for I'll give him sort of two or three pieces of uh, white bait and then probably one one shrimp and then I'll normally put a mussel in the shell in there as well because again it's enrichment for this guy it gives him something to do as if he, he was in the wild. And there you go, yeah, he, he definitely prefers fish today. But I also feed him, what else I've got? I've got some frozen scallops. To be honest, this guy feeds better than what I do. <laughs> he literally gets better dinner than me. So we'll just see if this guy wants to take one more. If he doesn't, yeah, I'm sure he will, because he's normally super greedy. And even once I finish feeding him, he's always coming out looking for more food. But now that he's eating this, I'll probably leave him sort of three or four days. There he goes again. I'll probably leave him for three or four days before I feed him again, just because they are quite greedy. They're sort of like Labradors. They'll just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And eventually, once they've eaten too much, they will actually regurgitate their food and it just makes a, a huge mess in the tank. He, it happened to me the first day I got him, put him in here. I think it was just the stress of moving the stuff. He, he puked up a load of muscles and stuff like that. Um, but that is just something that they do. So it's, it's not a bad thing. It's just just their natural reaction. So that's basically him feeding. He's, yeah, he's, he's playing up a little bit. That's my own fault. I shouldn't have nudged the tank like that, sort of spooked him, but I'll definitely get a, a better video of it. On, um, on Instagram, so go over there and follow me because I'll try and make a, a really nice cool video. So this is the other tank, so if you have watched my channel before you know I actually made, well I didn't make this tank, I made all this custom background, it's got like a cool little wall and a little uh, floating shelf feature. So this is the little tank that I had below that main salt water tank that I've got now. So in here, um, I've only got a few black mollies in there, which I've actually bred. I got to them a bit late, but there is, and you can see a little tiny baby molly right down the bottom there. Um, the only one that survived, because like I said, I got there a bit too late. But yeah, these guys sort of have been sort of living in here, and I just wanted to make use of the tank really. I think these guys look really cool. I really like these. But I do want to get some more fish in here as well. Like I said, I'm thinking about doing that huge predator uh, freshwater tank again. Um, getting some big predator fish in here, which I think will look really cool. But yeah, this is a little setup. I've got a little sump for a filter here, so everything's in there. And um, 
yeah these guys are doing really well it's just the three of them in here they've got the whole tank to themselves a little plant in there I don't have a light on it but it's right next to the window and it does get some natural sunlight in there as well you can see not too much as here there's literally no algae growing on it whatsoever so that's what happens to the little tanks so and what we'll do is now we're going to go upstairs and we'll have a look at the big uh, reefer 350 and um yeah we'll get into the shark feeding as well i forgot to mention that we are going to go feed my little bamboo shark that i've got and this is my reefer 350 so it looks a little bit different from what it used to i've sort of had to rearrange the rock and stuff um I did have that trigger fish in here and yeah trying to get him out was a nightmare I ended up having to pull all the rocks down scoop him up and yeah he just completely messed the whole scape up but looking at it now it looks 10 times better I've got so much more sort of room on the sand you see I've got a little bit of bacteria in here as well that's because I've got the bamboo shark in there um, I did have my panther grouper in here which sadly didn't make it um, I tried transferring them over to the tank downstairs and Again, I had to take all the rocks out to try and catch him, and I think it was just a bit too stressful for him. And I come down the next day, and he, he was dead, which is a shame. But these these things do happen. Um, but after rescaping this tank, I've got so much more room on the bottom, which is absolutely brilliant. You can just see there my little bamboo shark, cat-eyed shark. Um, I'm not sure what else they call him, but he's down there. So hopefully, he should feed for us. He's he's tweezer fed as well. Um, he's not. <laughs> He's not the most active feeder, he'll sort of come out, want a bit of food, but he won't come to the top yet, so I do have to put my hand in and feed him. I need to try and get a uh, like a little stick. It's like those little thin acrylic tube stick things that people feed with. I need to get one of them just to feed him. But other than that, the tank's doing really, really well. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna make this a coral tank. I think I made the previous video on that. Um, there's gonna be some coral in there. Basically, the coral that's in there is basically just staying in there. I might get a few zoas and hammer, hammer corals that are gonna go in there. Um, but apart from that, I'm, I'm not gonna do anything else with this tank. It's basically just gonna be for fish only, the sort of partially reef safe, I guess. Um, you can see I've got some stuff in here, so I've got my two clownfish. The anemone actually lives up in that little gap there for some reason. You're probably not going to see it, but he decided to move his way into that little cave, and that's where he stays now. So uh, he's in there from time to time. So you do see I've got my yellow tang and uh, vampire tang. I've got my blue dot puffer, um, and I do have, oh, there's my little dog face puffer up there. This little guy is adorable. I do actually think he's my favourite fish in the tank. He's just got so much personality, and yeah, I, I love this little guy. But yeah, this is how the, the Reef 350 is looking. Um, the sump down the bottom hasn't really changed from the last videos. The only thing I've done is I've uh, made a bigger hole on my refugium, um, and I just put a bigger pump on it just so there's more water flow basically through it, because I think that's why my uh, algae in there wasn't doing too good. My chat algae. So all these pumps as well, they're sort of just lounging around because I'm about to clean them, and I thought rather than clean them and make a mess and disturb the fish i'll quickly give them a, a feed first so you can see them feeding and then i'll i'll clean all those after but you can see i've got my two uh red sea uh, reef 90 lights on here they're absolutely brilliant i do plan on getting a third one because even though i think the coverage is fine i just want a little bit more light in the tank um just for the fish and for the coral so i will be purchasing another one so this will be moving this way this will be moving that way and i'll have a, a third one in the middle there but yeah brilliant lights um, 100% controlled by my phone so I can turn them on and off, change the colours, things like that. Absolutely love these things, they're, they're perfect. But yeah, so what we do is now we're going to try and get into a feeding. So all of these are actually uh, tweezer trained to feed. So what we'll do is I'll get a little bit of shrimp, um, get them to feed on that first and that should spark up the old shark down there and you'll see him go a little bit crazy and um, yeah, we'll, we'll feed him as well. So what I like to do is I get a nice big piece of shrimp like that and what I'll do is begin with is I'll just place that in there and you'll see that all the fish, as long as they're not going to be shy, will come up and they'll start feeding. You see my little blue dot puffer there? I wish it focused because of the light, the camera's going to really struggle focusing this. So he's normally always the first one to come up and feed. Um, dog face puffer, he's normally second. Oh yeah, here he comes, here he comes swimming along. He's normally second. So they'll have a good old munch. And then, oh, here he comes. So now you can see the old bamboo shark. He starts getting a little bit active. And it's so cool watching him swim around. So he doesn't really come up the top too much. He sort of stays along the bottom. Um, he has come up to the top a few times, but feeding him is a nightmare. I do have to stick my hand in there. So, um, but yeah, we'll feed him in a second. He'll, he'll start smelling and 
it's funny when he gets a little bit active, he gets a little bit excited. But as you can see, everything starts coming up to feed. So my yellow tang, my vampire tang, even the two clownfish, they both come up and have a good old feed and everything just has a good old chomp. So I like to try and give them, I've got a little blenny in there as well, you see him there. I did have a, a tridacna clam here, but I think the the puff fish sort of had a little go at that one night and that didn't last. So that little hole there is actually where the blenny sleeps. So he's up there, he's waiting for some food because I do chuck some, some loose shrimp in here as well. But you can see everyone has a little munch. The, the dog face puffery is just, oh, he's just my favorite. He's just adorable. When he bites as well, he sort of, uh, you can't really see that, but he sort of scrunches the top of his nose up. He's just, oh, he's just the cutest fish. And obviously he's gonna get huge. So as soon as he's big enough, he'll be moving down into the, the pond downstairs as well. So he'll have a huge amount of room. And the same for the shark, he'll get to like two, three foot long. So I will actually put him in the pond downstairs well once he gets to a, a bigger size. Uh, I can just see this little guy in there. You're not gonna see him, but my mandarin is just in there as well. And he's still feeding on live. I don't think he feeds on frozen just yet. Um, but at some point I'm sure he will hopefully get onto frozen beer. He's, he comes out every now and again. It's one of those fish that you hardly see. And then you can see down here there's some mussel shells because I do chuck mussels in here in the shell just because it gives all these fish something to do. It's a little bit of enrichment for them basically. Uh, gives them something to do, try and peck out the, the actual food. So you can see the little shark down here, he's starting to get a little bit agitated. So what I'll do is I'll break a little piece of this, this uh, shrimp off and we'll, we'll feed it to him and get the camera and not make any shadow because you can't see what's going on. But he is tweezer trained as well, so as long as he, get, as soon as he gets a little waft of that, he should be straight on them tweezers. Here he comes. So he should chase it, to be honest. He does normally chase after, you can see he's smelling. And bang, there he goes, straight on it. He's so cool. So if you haven't seen the video of this little guy, I did actually hatch him from an egg, I bought the egg and uh, cut the egg open and stuff like that, so that's well worth a watch. But yeah, he's grown so quick, and he eats really well. He, he doesn't eat a lot, so that sort of size shrimp, he'll, he'll probably eat two, maybe three pieces of that, and that's pretty much him done. He doesn't eat a great deal, but yeah, he is just, he's adorable. You can see he's been burrowing himself down into the into the sand. He's got all that debris on the back of him. And uh, But yeah, he's he's loving life, he's doing really well. Apparently they're normally quite hard to look after and to sort of get going once they come out of the egg but this guy pretty much ate two days out of the egg so I was, well, I was really relieved of that. But we'll just get another piece, give him another piece and um, then we'll just chuck some, some random shrimp in it and just give everything a good feed. So I've got a slightly bigger piece here that you have a good chew on. So yeah, these guys, their eyesight from what I've read isn't too great. Again, these are more sort of um, scent based, or you can see his mouth there. Kind of, it's a little bit dark, but he's got two big nostrils. But yeah, I'm I'm really happy with the way this guy's sort of progressing. And how can I get the light better? It's really difficult. Yeah, fella, I think he's got yum because I didn't give it to him straight away. But there you go. It's a nice big chunk there. What I do is he'll just sort of inhale it. Oh, in one, <laughs> he doesn't normally do that. He normally sits there and he'll chew on it, spit it out, chew on it, spit it out, shake it. Um, I've seen him act like a, a real shark and he sort of shakes his head and tears the food and stuff. But yeah, he's, he's incredible. So in here, I've just got the remainder of the krill. And what I'll do is I'll sort of take a step back, I'll pour this in and I'll sort of give you a, a little view of the, of the tank feeding. Oh, and there goes the other shark. This is one thing I, I wanted to try and capture on camera. So, even though he can swim, he walks on all fours. So he's got the, the petrol fins at the front. I don't know what the two at the back are called, but can you see him? He sort of crawls along like that. How funny is that? When he's when he's sort of out and about and he's hunting and he's looking for food, he'll, he'll swim around. Then once he's had a little bit of feet, you can see how fat his belly is now. 
he literally just sort of walks on all four fins. It's, it's so funny to watch him just crawl across the tank. So what he'll do is he'll probably get into that little gap or climb into there, hide into that little cave, and then he makes his way over to there at some point, and that's sort of his little hold up bit. But yeah, let's see if he does it again. So you, you'll see him sort of alternate between his fins. He's a bit like me, once I've had a big meal, I just, I just want to lay there, I don't want to move. But yeah, he's, he's really cool to watch. And hopefully he stays nice and dark. I know they do tend to sort of brown and grey out as they get bigger, but I'm hoping he stays nice and dark. So that when we get him in the pond, he'll sort of stand out on the sand and stuff like that. Because I do want to put a nice white sandy uh, bottom in there, just because I think that's going to make it look really nice. But you can see he's, he's proper chunky. And there he goes. He's just using them fins and he crawls along. That's so bizarre. I don't know if that is something that these, sh these sharks do. Um, but yeah, it's incredibly fun, fun to watch. I really need to get a GoPro so I can get some underwater footage. If anyone wants to buy me a GoPro, uh, let me know. Or if someone can pass me on to somebody that knows where I can get a nice cheap one from. Obviously it's got to be the newest one, but if anyone can do me a deal, then please let me know. But yeah, look at this little guy. He's so cool. And there you go, that's that's an update on all my tanks. So we've got the saltwater tank down here, saltwater tank upstairs and the freshwater tank out there. And um, yeah, that's basically where all the tanks are at the minute. Um, I'm gutted he didn't eat. I'm, I'm gutted I couldn't get him to, to hand feed because he, he's normally really good, he comes out of the water. Um, the snowflake kill that I've got here as well, uh, he tends to hide a lot. He doesn't come out for food, he, he stays behind his rock. I think it's because he's quite small and he's probably scared of the bigger eel he's going to eat him. Um, there's no way you can get to him because he's literally lodged right up in a tiny little crevice so he won't come out of there but once the uh, the pond is up and running um, this saltwater tank will actually stay here and keep running for well however long I need it to and I'm probably just going to use it as like a, a little grow out tank so any new fish that I get I think they're a little bit too small that one of the eels might be able to get hold of then I'll just put them in this tank beef them up and then they'll go into the pond and it's all going to be exactly the same the pond is going to cost me a fortune um, a lot of people have told me when I'm doing the water changes to go down and just get natural seawater out of the sea and use that and I, I'm kind of looking into it but I'm not too convinced but I don't like the idea of if there's a lot of boat traffic and stuff like that stuff that's going in the water I am thinking of literally just buying salt in bulk and mixing it up and doing it just like you would a, a regular water change on a fish tank I know that's going to cost me a lot more money, um, but I just think it's more beneficial for the pond in the long run, just to try and keep it as clean and sterile as I can, basically. Um, but I'm hoping that the filtration system I'm putting on it is going to be absolutely bulletproof. Um, I quickly showed you my DIY skimmer. I'm literally going to be making a bigger version of this on steroids, um, just because it's working so well. And obviously on a pond that big, for me to have a skimmer on that, the skimmer will have to be absolutely ginormous. The electric bill for that will probably be ridiculous just on its own so I will be doing a DIY skimmer so that will be a future video but yeah hopefully I can have like a nice big refugium and stuff like that just to help keep all the nutrients in the water down um, so the water changes have to be minimal basically that's that's the whole idea of it but um, yeah if you are interested in the snake stuff so like I said I've got my custom rack that I've built here behind me um, brilliant brilliant rack it currently doesn't have any heat because um, the company that I was buying the heat cable from, I'm using like a thin heat cable. Uh, I don't know if I can show you one second. So here on my custom hatching rack, you can see I've got two little strips back there. So this is actually soil warming cable, um, and this stuff gets incredibly hot. It's not going to focus because it's so dark, um, but this stuff gets incredibly hot, so you do need a thermostat for it. Um, but yeah, you can see I've got two little strips there, and that's what basically heats my entire hatchling slash uh, grow on uh, rack that I've got here. If you've not seen these tubs, um, go through my YouTube, definitely check these out because these things are awesome. Um, you can see I've got little custom dividers in there and stuff like that. Um, I've got little bowl holders which lock the bowl space, so well worth a look at if you're interested in sort of making your own DIY tubs. But yeah, that's the sort of cable that I'm going to be using for this rack over here um, I will be doing a full video on this but I am literally just waiting for that heat cable so so my room currently is hot uh, I'm, I've got the room running at about what is it 
it's just over 88 degrees Fahrenheit and that's just so I'm sort of trying to keep the, the main room heated just because these dark guys don't have a heat source. The guys on here, they've all got their own heat mats and stuff like that, so they're all good, they're all on thermostat, they're fine. But the, these ones behind me, they don't. It's literally just the ambient temperature in the room, which I've seen multiple people do and have success with. I'm not too fond of it, but it is what it is. You've got to do what you've got to do. Um, I wanted to put off building this rack until I got the heat source, but it's just circumstances I had to get it built, basically. So yeah, I will do a video on that if you're interested. But yeah, that's where we are currently at. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, don't be down in the comments moaning at me about putting my hand in a tank with dangerous fish. I know the risks, I know what I'm doing. And yeah, that's that's all there is to it. So don't start having a guy on me because I, I don't care. But um, apart from that, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you're just excited as I am about the pond build and getting stingrays and big groupers and things like that. It's, it's gonna be absolutely incredible. So. Stick around, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. It's gonna be so good. So with all that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.